Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a 3D cross bore hole inversion with recipe. For this, first you have to select 3D and by default keep it on inverse. The next step is selecting your your file format for this specific example available on our repository. We are selecting protocol DC and then we will import our data. All the examples are available in the SRC folder examples. Now we are selecting DC 3D borehole and import protocol dot that. So by default the cross section and the pseudo section is incorrect. We have to import the correct electrode topography. But before that, there is a certain combination and columns that you have to put in your file. First is the label. It's usually not important, but if you're using protocol as file format, it is important to have this label column in your file. Otherwise, you don't need it. X, Y, and Z are your electrode locations. And the final column is the flag for knowing if one electrode is buried in subsurface or not. With one meaning the electrode is buried in subsurface and zero means that the electrode is on the surface. Now it's very important to note that for the 3D cross bore hole inversions or modeling, you always need a surface because we still don't support whole space meshes for 3D cross bore hole inversions or modeling. So I am going to keep the uppermost electrode in each line. As you know, there are 12 and they're changing. The uppermost electrode as the electrode on the surface. It's not important that where the Z value is, just uncheck buried. Also, this will not affect your inversions. All right, I'm going to import that elect.csv and open it. Recipe automatically identifies those electrodes that have been flagged as buried, meaning one, and those that have been flagged as not buried with flag zero. And if I go back to my data and look at the pseudo section I see that all of my four like four lines are buried in subsurface. For now the, cro uh, the pseudo section is not very meaningful because we still don't support cross bore hole 3D pseudo sections. This is an unconventional array. All right the next step is creating a mesh. Any mesh would be good depending on the parameters you like. For this specific problem, I'm going with a characteristic length of two and a half centimeter with twice growth factor from top and 20 growth factor from bottom and create my mesh. You can keep it by default and invert your data right away, but most of the times creating a mesh helps the inversion a lot. Okay, this is my mesh and then I can go to the inversion setting and play around with my uh, error models for example I'm gonna give it maybe 5% error as the B weight and then invert my data right away as it may take some time I will skip this part in the video It's important to note that the recipe will show you a top view of your mesh as the inversion moves forward. Additionally, you will see the RMS versus iteration reducing. This data was pretty much clean, so you don't see too many iterations. And in a general rule of thumb is that you should not see more than three or four iterations. Otherwise, you have to go back, clean up your data, assign better error model values, and reinvert your data. As you can see, 
we have a block model that represents the subsurface with four boreholes on each side. And I can assess this to see if there are any anomalies inside this block model. I already see some sort of conductive feature in here, so I'm assuming if I slice it at x axis 20 centimeters and y axis 20 centimeters, I'm going to see this conductive feature much better. As you can see, the conductive feature inside is quite obvious. I can select a different color scheme like jet for better representation and see the conductive feature. And also, as always, I have to go to the post-processing and make sure that my inversion went well. This inversion seems to have gone pretty well. I can ignore these two points. But if you don't like him, filter him and invert your data. Thank you very much for watching this video.